Fusion 360's text feature is so limited, there are literally hundreds of videos showing workarounds and hacks. Right now, that all changes. Today's Fusion 360 update brings a much needed overhaul to the text command. You can now properly create text along a path, align text, and so much more. The text command is a sketch feature, so we'll first have to create a new sketch on an origin plane or an existing surface. You'll then find the text feature under the Create dropdown. Immediately after activating, you'll see that we now have a brand new workflow. We can choose between the regular text or text on path. Let's take a look at the text updates and then we'll explore the new text on path workflow. With the text option selected as the type, we first have to define the starting point of our text frame. This is the first critical update. Previously, we simply selected an anchor point that the text was tied to. You're now required to define two corners of the text frame. I'll click once at the origin point, and notice that we can now snap the text frame into any of the grid elements. This text frame can also snap to pre-existing faces or edges, making it even easier to precisely place your text. Similar to before, the outside of the text frame is made up of construction lines. However, the new text frame serves as a bounding box that can be used to align text, similar to common graphic programs. We can now simply click the alignment icons to left align, center align, or right align the text. Notice this can be done in both horizontal and vertical directions. The ability to flip the text is the same as before. However, you'll notice they updated the icons to mimic the industry standard. At a glance, the text height doesn't appear to have changed. However, the use of the new text frame means the height is now truly defining the height of the text. For example, if I change the height to 8 millimeters, the height of the tallest letters will be 8 millimeters measured from the top to bottom. In this case, the letter S and the letter T will both be 8 millimeters tall. Previously, the height changed the bounty box height, which made it very hard to precisely size your text, especially when you changed fonts. Bold and italic are fairly straightforward, they work as expected just like they do in other programs. However, they did remove the option to underline text. I don't know why they removed that, but my best guess is that it was a combination of it not being used since it simply created a line and that it didn't work well with the next change, which is the ability to write text on multiple lines. Previously, you would have to use the text feature each time you wanted a new line of text. You can now simply continue to type and it will automatically wrap the text onto the next line based on your text frame. You can also hit the enter key to create manual line breaks. This allows you to write several different lines of text all within one text feature. The fonts available have not changed and it's important to note that you can still add custom fonts. I frequently get questions about this, so check out the video description for a link where I cover how to use custom fonts in Fusion 360. The last update is the ability to angle or rotate your text. Previously, the text feature had the angle option in the dialog. However, because the new text frame is dynamic, you'll see that we can now select any of the four corners, the midpoints, or the center of the text frame. We can then drag the rotation slider to angle the text. Once you drag the slider, you'll also be able to type out a specific degree value. We can then click OK to confirm the text. Afterward, you'll be able to fully define the text frame with the use of sketch constraints and dimensions. This allows you to keep the sketch fully defined, which is critical in helping the text update predictably. The new text frame and alignment options also make it very easy to precisely place text on the face of a model. Let's go ahead and finish the sketch. Another common question is how to edit existing text. First, you need to activate the sketch that contains the text. We can either right click on the sketch and select Edit Sketch, or we can double click on the sketch in the timeline. 
From here, we can double click on the text itself or we can right click and select edit text. The text feature will then reopen as the edit text dialog where you can then alter the text and its styles. One last thing before we look at text on path. When you right click on text, you will see the explode text option. This essentially traces the outline of your font and converts it into Fusion 360's native sketch geometry. Now this is helpful if you're working with a custom font that will not otherwise extrude into a 3D body. Otherwise, I recommend not exploding text as once you explode it, you will not be able to edit the text. All of the standard fonts can be extruded by simply selecting them, followed by the extrude command. This works regardless of whether you activate it with the shortcut or from the toolbar. Let's now take a look at the new feature, Text on Path. Text on Path lets you write text on curved geometry, including arcs, circles, and splines. To be clear, this wrapping is for two dimensions or everything contained in your two dimensional sketch. If you want to wrap text around a three-dimensional curve, then check out my tutorial on the Maze Puzzle Box where I demo the new emboss feature. I'll create a new sketch on top of this base plate. From here, we can either activate the text feature, or we can right-click on the inner edge. Notice how text on path is presented in the right-click menu when you select any curve geometry. Most of the settings with text on path are the same as the regular text command. However, you will see the placement option and fit to path, which is both unique to text on path. The placement option lets us flip the text to either side of the path. Fit to path will space the letters out across the entire path. Note that at this time, this is the only control over letter spacing. Now I do believe they'll add more spacing control in the future, but for now, we'll have to rely on the text alignment. Notice how the text alignment is only available in one direction. This isn't the most helpful for a circle, but it will be more useful with an arc or spline. I'll go ahead and sketch out a fit point spline, followed by activating the text command from the shortcuts box. When activating the text command first, you'll need to select the text on path type before being able to select the curve. I'll go ahead and type out some example text. Notice this time, the text align options are helpful as it adapts to the length of the spline. After confirming the text, you'll see that the text adapts to any changes made to the curve, including complex splines. One important callout with the text on path is that it currently only supports single paths. For this initial release, there is no chaining support for touching paths. That means all of the geometry must be one sketch entity. However, I do expect this to be a future enhancement. Lastly, it's important to note that any existing text used in your current design files will be edited with the old text dialog. This is due to the text framing being different and there being no way for the text to automatically adapt without the potential of breaking your file. That means all new text going forward will use the new text frame in available features. If you want to take advantage of them, you will have to delete any existing text and simply recreate it. Last but not least, I wanna give a thanks to the new patrons, Brian, Jonathan, and Ron. And thanks to those who bought me coffee. Thanks for sticking around to the end of this tutorial. You can help me out by sharing this video with your friends and colleagues who use Fusion 360. Then be sure to check out my playlist in the lower right hand corner to watch more Fusion 360 sketching tutorials.